Okay, here's a combination circuit. First thing we want to start off with uh, is to find our total resistance in the circuit. So starting from the right hand side, we've got resistor 1 over here, and we've got resistor 4 and resistor 5 that are in parallel with resistor 6. So if we were to write our resistance equation, starting from the right hand side, while well, we'd say resistor 6 is in parallel with the sum of resistor 4 and resistor 5. So we have to do that first. So we add resistor 4 and resistor 5 and then we put it in parallel with resistor 6. So we've got to do that first. So we're going to put brackets around that to denote that we're going to do it first. So now we've dealt with this one, this one, and this one. So now we've got to deal with resistor 3. We can see that resistor 3 is in series with whatever the sum of resistance is there. So we're just going to add on resistor 3 on the end. Now resistor 3 added on to, this, to the value of resistance in parallel, resistor 4, 5, 6 in parallel, is all going to be in parallel with resistor 2. So we've got to do all this stuff here first. So I'm going to put another set of brackets around here. Then I'm going to put resistor 2 in parallel with all of that. So resistor 2 is going to go right there. And then I'm going to have one value of resistance, right, from this point here and this point here all the way back. That was going to be one value of resistance. And we can see that resistor 1 is in series with that value of resistance and resistor 7 is in series with the value of resistance. So I'm going to put another set of brackets here. I'm just going to add on resistor 1 plus resistor 7 on the end. And there's your RT equation. So if we do all that, so we say resistor 6 is 1,000 ohms. And that's in parallel with the sum of resistor 4 and 5, which is 400 plus 200. So now we have 1,000 in parallel with 600. Okay, and so if you did that, you've cut, you'd come to 375. Then we're just going to add on resistor 3, which is 25, which gives us 400. And that 400 is in parallel with resistor 2, which is 100. And 400 in parallel with re, um, 100 is 80. Now we're just going to add on our two last resistors, uh, 100 ohms. So we've got 180 and then another 50 for resistor 7. So we end up with an RT of 230 ohms. So we can go ahead and write 230 ohms over here. All right, now that we have our total resistance, 230 ohms, let's take a look here. So we've got another value over here we've got is 6 amps, saying that there's 6 amps on the return path. So I'm just going to mark out our arrows here. So if we have 6 amps coming back here, we must have 6 amps going into the circuit. So this must equal 6 amps. And the total amount of current going in, the total amount of current going out, uh, must equal the total amperage. So if we have 6 amps coming in, 6 amps going out, we must have 6 amps total. So now we can find our total voltage. And using Ohm's Law, E equals I times R. We've got 6 amps times 230 Ohms of resistance gives us a voltage of 1,380 volts. And we can do the same here. We can find out what our voltage is here. E equals I times R. So I've got a 600 volt drop here. And over here, I've got E equals I times R. Uh, half the value of resistance, same amount of current, so half the amount of voltage drop. So over here, 6 times 50, so we got 300 volts over here. So we started with 1,380, 
And once we get to across this load over here, we've dropped 600 volts. And once we get across this load over here, we dropped another 300 volts. So we started with uh, 1,380, and we just dropped 900 volts. So that leaves us with 480 volts. So from this point here to this point here, I must have 480 volts. Okay, so now I have 480 volts across there. I can find out how much current is flowing through that just by using Ohm's law. So I2 equals E2 over R2. So 480 divided by 100 ohms is 4.8 amps. So I must have 4.8 amps flowing through here. And I started at this point here. I started, I'm saying, well, I've got 6 amps here, and 4.8 just went this way. So I must have the difference. The difference going this way is 1.2 amps. 6 minus 4.8 is 1.2 amps. Now I can get my voltage at that point. And Ohm's law, E equals I times R, so we've got... 1.2 amps times 25 ohms is going to leave us with a 30 volt drop there. So I started uh, with 480 volts and I just dropped 30 volts here. So that leaves me with 450 volts there. From this point here to this point here, I've got 450 volts. Also means, because these are in parallel, I must have 450 volts from that point to that point. So I can write 450 volts there. And now I can get my current through resistor 6 using Ohm's law. I6 equals E6 over R6, 450 divided by, uh, sorry, um, 450 volts divided by 1,000 ohms is 0.45 amps. 0.45 amps. 0.45 amps going through there. And I started at this point here. We're saying, well, I had 1.2 right here. There's 1.2 there. And some goes down there. And 0.45 amps goes that way. So 1.2 less the 4.5 amps that goes that way must equal the current that's going through these two series resistors here. So 1.2 minus 0.45 is going to leave us with 0.75 of an amp. And because these are in series with each other, that'll be 0.75 of an amp as well. Now we can get our voltage. So Ohm's law voltage here, we've got E4 equals I4 times R4. 0.75 times 400 is a 300 volt drop. Now we're saying that the total value of voltage from here to here and here to here is 450 and we just dropped 300 so the value left over must be 150 volts here or in other words 150 plus the 300 must equal the total applied voltage of 450 which is which it does. You can always just do the Ohm's law. You can say well E5 equals R5 times I5 so probably 200 times 0.75 is 150. And it's just as easy as that.